So is the dialogue you just heard advancing Americans' discussion about race? Joining me to respond, criminal defense attorney Eric Guster, executive director of the Tea Party.net, my good friend Niger Innes, and Fox News contributor Deneen Borelli. Ladies first, uh, Deneen, uh, President Obama's comments and the dignity of the office. It's, it's outrageous, David. I think he has absolutely lowered the standard in terms of being president of the United States. He made no mention of racism in America when he ran for president, not once, but twice. And I have dubbed him today rapper in chief for using yes. such language. And you should see all the hate mail that I'm getting. I'm being attacked for talking about uh, President Obama using such language on the national platform. What are young children thinking? What are people thinking that this is coming from the president of the United States so is outrageous. Sounds like you're talking about the office of the presidency, Absolutely. not the partisanship, but the office of the president. Yes. Regardless of whoever sits there, uh, Niger, let's go to you on this. Where do you stand? The president's use of the N word. I, I don't care so much about the president's use of the N word as much as, although I do agree with Deneen, and she's got a great line. I think she stole it from me. Uh, rapper in chief, uh, that is the president. Uh, it's also entertainer in chief. You know, he's tapped into the entertainment market. It and used it very successfully for his own political purposes. I think the context is much more important. I think the fact that today we had an extraordinary day in South Carolina where you had Nikki Haley, the first Indian American governor of South Carolina, flanked by one of two black Republicans, uh, being, uh, senators in the United States Senate, Tim Scott, of course, who is Republican. And here you have this extraordinary moment where these folk remove or, or say that they plan to remove the Confederate flag from the uh, state grounds. You have this extraordinary moment about how far we've come as a country and the fact that we are moving forward together in South Carolina, in Charleston, all over this country. And this president, if you look at the context of where he used that N-word, what he was essentially saying, Saying is that things have not really changed. All right, let's go to Governor Haley. Uh, this is what she had to say about removing the Confederate flag. We do not need to declare a winner and a loser here. We respect freedom of expression, and that for those who wish to show their respect for the flag on their private property, no one will stand in your way. But the State House is different, and the events of this past week call upon us to look at this in a different way. Today, we are here in a moment of unity in our state without ill will to say it's time to move the flag from the Capitol grounds. And let's go back in time. This is, of course, former president and former governor Bill Clinton. Show this. The blue star above the word Arkansas to commemorate the Confederate flag, Confederate States of America. So a different application there. To our other guest, Eric Guster. Eric, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Okay, it, your it, take it, on the president's uh, statement and the context. Well, the context was very clear. The president was speaking about race relations and how things have come far. However, a lot of people have to understand that just not saying the N-word in public is not necessarily saying that racism is totally eradicated. And it was, his context was very clear. And what Deneen was saying about rapper in chief, that was totally inappropriate because he wasn't saying it in a rap lyric or he wasn't saying this um, just to be casual. He was talking about the deep-rooted areas of racism that we have to deal where? with. Okay, and I'm so in Birmingham, Alabama. Where? I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, which you see the background behind me. So I know about civil rights. I know about Where's racism. Where's the racism, and, Eric? And things going, get things getting the better. Man was the man was elected Eric, this let me time. ask you this question. Let me ask you this question then, because Deneen asked it, and I, I'll put it in a different context or in a different frame. Sure. Uh, is America institutionally racist? That's racism, which requires codified law, a, a social acceptance, societal acceptance, and we know that racist, racist will always exist. Bias, prejudice in some form, black, white, and any form will always exist. Is America institutionally racist, or are there racists in America? 
there are definitely racists in America. There is racism from the boardroom to the courtroom. So we have to deal with those people. Just like this moron who went and killed nine people, he was seriously a racist. So we have to deal with those different levels of racism and start addressing it. And some people have said the president has not talked about racism. And when he finally does, he's getting attacked. He All did right, the so right let thing me bring by putting back, it in context. Let me bring this back to Deneen. Uh, Deneen, the question is, are we institutionally racist? I say we're not. We don't have codified law like we did during slavery. We don't have societal acceptance. Matter of fact, what we see in South Carolina is a rejection by all ethnicities of right. this. Well, we, our country has made amazing strides, David. The, the three of us sitting here, the four of us on national television, Obama was elected twice. It wasn't only with black voters. A black but senator here, in South, South Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. Black votes. But here we're talking about a flag, and here we're talking about racism again, that people are saying that is rampant in America. America is an exceptional country. Americans can work hard, apply themselves, no matter who you are or what your background in. Anything can happen as long as you do that. Okay. Okay, Niger, exactly. there, there is a, there's always bias in life. We, right. we have to be honest about it. Right. It can happen in any dynamic, black, white, Asian, male, female. It exists. So we deal with bias. We have laws, and we have a societal rejection of that. So we are not static. We're not where we were, where we were in the 60s. Do you think we are where the president says we are today, or are we somewhere else? No, we're way somewhere else. We are moving forward as a country. And look, we have all traveled around the world, and racism or bigotry is a part of the human condition. From Africa to Europe to Asia, tribalism, uh, all types of religious uh, animosities th that exist and, and, and bigotry that exists. America has come so far, so relatively quickly. And, I, you know, it's not often that I quote a black Democrat, but let me quote Harold Ford, who actually took uh, uh, issue with the president using the N-word. And the context, he says, the challenge of our age for not just minorities, but for working class folk is education. We need education reform. All right, back to you, Eric. Uh, you've heard from both Deneen and Niger again. Uh, haven't we evolved to the point where we can actually have an honest discussion, but unfortunately it's often polluted by the hyperbole? Uh, I don't want to talk about the use of the N-word. I, I agree on the office being more important, but let's face it, we're not talking about the issue. We're talking about a word. Well, we're talking about the word and the issue because, just like the president said in that podcast, it just not saying the word in public does not mean that racism is gone. And so we have to get to the deep-rooted issues and start listening to each other opposed to just battling rams like on the mountain where we don't listen to each other. And we have come a long way. I agree with that 100 percent. Just like what Deneen said, we have four African Americans on national TV right now discussing this. We have come a long way, but we have a long way to go. And that's why it's important to have those discussions open discussions and not be so PC about it where well, we can't have those I'll tell discussions. you what we won't be is we won't be dishonest about it as Americans and I believe that this country I think we all agree uh, Eric Niger Deneen we've come a far way and there will always be bias but we deal with those individual instances Eric thank you Deneen Niger great to thank see you, you again